Tim and Gar, and, and these are just to kind of, as a kind of final wrap up for the roof segments that we've cut. You know, we've we've shown and demonstrated a lot of different methods and methodologies when it comes to cutting the roof and a lot of different cut methods. I think there's some some things that are common in all of them. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, you know, absolutely. You're going for a common goal. You know, that's your vertical ventilation. But the one thing to take away, you know, from what we've done here today is you cannot determine your tactic before you see your situation. I agree. You know, what the roof gives you is what cut you're going to use, whether you're going to use, you know, a, a, a drop cut, a quick cut, you know, a, 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 um, ridge cut. a ridge cut, whatever, whatever that roof gives you, that's going to determine your tactic. So you cannot go into a situation of ventilation with a preconceived notion of we're going to go to the roof and make this cut till you see what the roof's giving you. I agree. And, and you know, one of the things that I think about as, as being a member of the roof team is having a bunch of tools in a bag and then picking the right tool for the right situation at the right time. And, you know, whatever your cut method is, I think one of the things to, to make sure that you think about is, you know, one, N number one, do it safely. Uh, you know, obviously we would want to have a roof ladder at least close by if you couldn't cut directly from the roof ladder. And then you want to have the right tools. Uh, in my mind, when I go to the roof or think about going to the roof as a member of the roof team, I like having a Halligan, a six foot uh, New York style roof hook, and uh, you know, either a chainsaw or a rotary saw in, in, in our situation. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And you know, when you talk about the chainsaw, um, it doesn't matter what brand you have, just make sure it's a good, powerful, powerful saw in good working order. Um, you know, we prefer a 20 inch bar and the chain is what's imperative. If you can get afford a good carbide chain, that makes all the difference in the world. We did all of these cuts here today, probably 10 or so different cuts, same chain, and it works just as well on the last cut as it did on the first. So that's just a good thing if you're going to invest in your roof equipment or in your saw, a good quality carbide tip chain. I agree 100%. You know, this is the this is our basic saw setup. Uh, it's a powerful head, 20 inch bar, carbide chain. We use these day in, day out, and you know, uh, the the cost of the carbide is well worth the time savings when it comes to roof cutting operations. I think it makes it, uh, you know, some in some cases like a hot knife through butter, gets us on the roof, gets the job done, gets us off the roof. Absolutely, you know, and just to wrap everything up, everything you've seen us do here today, um, it's not going to do you any good unless you get out there and train it and actually make these cuts yourself. Um, you know, if you have a district that's, you know, this building is being planned for demolition, contact the owner, get a hold of it, get on the roof and make these cuts. Get the saw in your hand. There's nothing better than you can do is get the saw in your hand. I agree, and, and you know, training is the key. You have to be willing to go out and, and practice like you play or, or you know, practice to play if that's how you want to think of it and uh, you got to get good at all of those different tools in the tool bag and uh, you know so that you can be productive and safe in whatever environment you're operating in.